Hello everyone, my name is Pablo Subieta. I'm a postdoctoral researcher at the University of Chicago within the Pritzker School of Molecular Engineering. And today I would like to talk to you about enhanced sampling in molecular dynamic simulations with Julia. When we perform molecular dynamic simulations, two of the most common approaches to explore the state space of a system are either to integrate, for example, Newton's equations or to perform a Monte Carlo sampling of our system. Although my work involves methods that rely only on integration of the equations of motion, so I'll focus only on, on this. Enhanced sampling methods can be described as strategies to better sample the state space of a given system. A uh, way to achieve this is to take an existing integration scheme for the equations of motion, then trying to learn the free energy landscape locally and use that information to balance the system towards states of higher energy that otherwise might be uh, hard to reach. Yeah. Enhanced sampling techniques are important and sometimes essential for computational exploring phenomena on time scales or energy regimes which are hard to probe by performing traditional quantum mechanical calculations or molecular dynamic simulations. In some cases we can get important boosts by using hardware accelerators or other, or other specialized hardware. Uh, but enhanced sampling methods might still be necessary to study certain processes. Part of my current work actually centers around mixing both strategies. Um, there are many enhanced sampling algorithms. Uh, some of the classic ones, probably already known by some, are umbrella sampling or adaptive biasing force. But there are some newer, newer developments which build upon the classic ones and use, for example, artificial neural networks uh, to get smooth approximations of the free energy of a system. Currently, there's only a handful of solutions to perform enhanced sampling simulations, one of which, called SAGES, has been developed within my research group. Uh, it is a C++ library which uh, provides a way for its users to make use of enhanced sampling methods with different molecular packages that do not provide such functionality. These include uh, LAMPS, Chromax, among others. Uh, currently, the library supports computations on CPU, either on a single machine or, on a, or in a cluster through MPI. And uh, in some in instances, we also support molecular dynamics backends that work on GPUs, but currently we need to copy the system's data to the, uh, from GPU to CPU so we can compute the forces needed to bias the system. And then we have to move back the data to the GPU. Uh, sometimes we need to do this after each integration step, and so this can easily become a bottleneck of the computation, making us lose the advantages of uh, integrating on a GPU. So the a goal of my work is to improve upon the current solutions. When I started working on this, there were additional requirements that uh, we needed to take into consideration. And these were the, we needed interoperability with different molecular dynamic libraries. We wanted to the, to provide the user a, an easy way to extend the system and to, to uh, build new sampling schemes. Uh, we wanted fast prototyping and development, and we wanted my integration with some machine learning backend. So taking all this into consideration uh, led us to think that probably the best frameworks to work with were Julia or Jax or other similar Python libraries. Unfortunately for me, the rest of the developers that could get involved in the project only know Python, so I had to choose to go with Jax. Nonetheless, Julia ha has been an impor extremely important tool in the developments I have done in this area. So let me illustrate this, uh, this with an example of how, how I started building some of the pieces of code that allow us to communicate with molecular dynamic backends that work on the GPU. So let me switch here to notebook. All right. So whenever I've had to develop a C++ extension with Python interfaces to extend other C++ libraries, uh, I've been able to do something like this. So in a Pluto notebook, I load the dynamic libraries from the molecular dynamics package. In this case, it's OpenMM. Then I load some C++ headers followed by the Python packages that define the, that provide the user interface. And for example, to test things, I use a, a, um, an example system. In this case, uh, I have loaded here the example of an alanine dipeptide molecule. So once the system is defined, uh, what I've been done, what I've been doing is I write some C++ classes, some functions, and use, for example, Julia to dynamically test, uh, test them within Julia methods. Um, for example, here, um, here, um, here I'm taking a Python object that holds a C++ object, and I'm building another C++ object from it, and I can 
take all of these C++ code ones, I'm satisfied with it, and move it to appropriate files and iterate over this process until I get a more or less complete C++ library. So let me go back to the slides. So I cannot say I'm a strong C++ developer, but these kind of interoperability capabilities that Julia provides have made this whole process much easier and much faster for me. And as a consequence, I was able to write a couple of C++ with Python interface libraries and another Python package. Of course, this has also led me to write uh, some uh, Julia libraries as my product, and you can find them here. Hopefully, they were they they might be useful for anybody. Um, so let me now talk a bit about uh, the performance comparisons between the code developed uh, with Python and JAX and the Julia one. So when comparing the the overhead that the enhance sampling method uh, causes when using the Julia implementation of the same method, and we get a 5% overhead in Julia, whereas in Python it is around 20%, so probably it's not surprising for anybody here. But I mean, still it's a nice example of how even these JIT compilers libraries in Python might not give you an easy way to, to get the most of the performance that you sometimes are able to get with Julia. Uh, another advantage from using Julia actually came from its community. So along the years I have, been, uh, have become familiar with many topics in physics, mathematics, and computer science because there's a lot of experts willing to share their knowledge and their knowledge on what, what are the best tools for many tasks uh, within our community. So our, one recent idea for a new head sampling strategy came from reading topics that I got to know through the Julia community, and it's related to spe spectral methods such as the ones that approxfun.gl uses. So it, it, this idea allowed me to get uh, a converged free energy map from the main dihedral angles of the adenine dipeptide in around 50,000 integration steps, and this in a RTX 2080 super machine takes around 15 minutes, which is probably near the fastest uh, near the fastest way uh, one near the fastest way uh, near the fastest time one can compute the, such result right now. So just to wrap up, uh, I guess uh, we can say that even when your target is not building a Julia library. Julia can still solve the two language problem through all the amazing uh, interoperability capabilities that, of, that it offers. Uh, many Julia patterns can, of course, help you improve Python code. Uh, I, uh, I had to work with some CUDA and automatic differentiation libraries for my work, and, and although they might require a bit of work, they generally work just fine. And uh, uh, the last uh, point that I would like to for you to take away is that the knowledge shared by the community is just is, is just a joy. So that's all, and thank you.